Week 3 of the Phase 2 MUMT SOE began the portion in which the soldiers perform situational training exercises. The intent of the STIX segment is to perform missions and collect data on all relevant aspects of the MUMT operations at a platoon level. The soldiers are going to engage live opponents in the Op 4 to really challenge and fight and take objectives. The main goal is to look at what we call man-on-man -man teaming. How are the soldiers deploying the robotic assets? If they push a robot forward of the manned vehicle and it gets destroyed, we've lost some money, some hardware. If their vehicle gets destroyed, we've lost soldier lives, which we never want to do. So our main goal is to see how they use the robotic assets and to train them to use them so they work as a team, the robots and the humans together. They're gonna get a mission each day. They're gonna do their mission planning tasks. They're gonna get into their systems and they're gonna say, take that hill, pull recon on this route, observe this objective, defend this piece of terrain. We're not scripting what they're supposed to do. Soldiers are gonna do their mission planning and there's going to be an innovative captain or sergeant major that's gonna say, why don't we do this? We're gonna find out what works and what doesn't work and really what ultimately what this starts to form is what's the doctrine that's gonna really underpin all of our robotic systems moving forward. The MUM-T company formations utilized six MET-Ds and 12 RCVs during STIX, split into three platoon variants. Each variant is made up of two sections, with one MET-D serving as controller for two RCVs. The platoon variants employ the three variants of RCVs, surrogate, medium, and light, ranging in size, function, and capabilities. The soldiers applied knowledge of the MUMT variants gained during the training weeks, centering on offensive, defensive, reconnaissance, and security tasks. We were in the rear, so we were using the, the RCVs out in front. Since they're unmanned, so there was less probability of casualties, so I thought that worked well. We had to put a lot of thought processes on how we're going to implement them in new formations and stuff like that, having five vehicles instead of just our normal four. But I think it worked out well, and we crossed the objective and killed the target. Each day, data collection personnel from the Research and Analysis Center, Army Research Laboratory, DEVCOM Data and Analysis Center, and Army Test and Evaluation Command actively monitored all elements of soldier activities including vehicle movement, communications, and the impact of the MUMT platforms on fulfillment of mission objectives. We're collecting various types of data. Some of it is what we call biometric. We would put a uh, chest harness on them that's measuring their heart rate. We put what we call a galvanic skin sensor on them that helps measure stress. And then we're giving them questionnaires regarding motion sickness, cognitive loading. Is it too much for them or can they successfully accomplish their mission because of the extra computing or the autonomy that we've put into the system to aid them, kind of acting as the third crew member. Now that we're back, we're actually being asked about different technologies we were using, how we felt about those, what needed to be changed. So now I'm just giving my honest opinion and uh, just going from there, hopefully it'll help them. We have a certain way that we think it should work, but these are the users. These are the guys that are gonna be deploying them. And by running these experiments, we get their invaluable feedback on how the subject matter experts or the soldiers would use these and how we can make changes to make them even better for them. So we're working as a team, the engineers and the soldiers together to help field a better platform. <laughs>